Hello everybody and welcome back to Operation Logistics, where we are currently trying to determine outside adjacencies. And I don't think that this physics.overlap sphere is actually the way we want to do this. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. And we're just going to start kind of from scratch-ish. Not particularly from scratch, but just a little bit from scratch. So, here's the thing. We know that we're already in one of these border hexes. And we know that one of these is a whole lot closer than the others. The question is, which one? So, let's go ahead and determine which one is the closest. And for that, we can go ahead and say something along the lines of biome hexes this is actually in the world hex, but this is a hex store, so we don't want to use that array. So we want to use biome hex, an array? No, it's a list, isn't it? List biome hex, biome hex. Actually, we'll just, we'll just, uh, we've already got a biome hexes. So we'll, we'll say something along the lines of biomes equals, and we're going to grab this from the hex manager. So manager dot sub hexes, if we've got it, biome hex manager dot sub hexes. Okay, so that's our list right there. And we're only going to be doing this six times per biome hex, so that will speed things up substantially. So essentially, what we need to do is we need to say, we, we need to find which one is the closest one. And since we're just comparing, square magnitude should be fine for that. So let's go ahead and say float nearest equals mathf.infinity. And actually, we'll, we'll call this float distance or just dist. Yeah, that's fine. And then biome hex. And we'll call this near equals null. Okay. For int i, actually we're gonna have to use j, int j equals zero. j is less than biomes dot count, j plus plus. And then we're going to go ahead and iterate through this list of biomes. So if the distance between Let's go ahead and get our actual distance here, or our actual world position here. So vector3 world pose equals, and this is going to be manager.get building hex position. And then we are going to be passing in essentially this new int3. Well, new building.location new building dot location. Okay. So that should get us our estimated position. And then we need to be testing that position versus the position of the near biome hex, right? But the biome hexes aren't necessarily where we expect them to be right now. And we're already doing something very similar here. Yeah, we're, we're doing something incredibly similar here, and I was just thinking maybe we could move this down there, but I don't think we can because this is within a separate for loop. So yeah, that, that's not going to work. Or rather, this is within a this while loop. So yeah, that's not going to work at all. So we're going to need to go ahead and do something very similar to this here. We need to make sure that biome hexes i dot position equals subhex manager dot subhexes i dot transform dot position. Right? No, it is already set, isn't it? Yes, it is already set. Okay, perfect. We can trust the position of the biome hex. So, let's go ahead and 
have our... Uh... Actually, I, I like this nearest disc nomenclature. And, uh... Oh, it's used in an enclosing local scope. Okay, we'll, we'll just use dist. It's fine. So if... Let, let's go ahead and, and calculate float distance equals. This is going to be essentially the same thing we did right here. This is going to be... World po... No. In the parentheses. World pose minus... And this is going to be biomes j dot transform transform dot position dot square magnitude. We don't care about the actual magnitude. I would prefer having a faster square magnitude call here because we already have some startup time issues. So then if our distance is less than dist then we will go ahead and say dist equals distance near equals biomes j. Okay. And then down here, as, as you can see, this is basically exactly the same thing we did here. Then, once the for loop is over, we know that our near is our nearest hex. That said, we are going to need one more check here, and that is if biomes j dot x index equals new building dot location dot biome hex we just want to continue and ignore that hex because we don't care about the hex that we're actually on we want to know which other world hex or rather which other biome hex is the closest right so that's fine. And then we would want down here, we've, we've determined which one is the closest. We know which hex is closest. So now we just need to determine if it's closer than our hex or not. Ish? Not really if it's closer than our hex. If, if we're closer I mean not really necessarily to our hex than that but we we need to be checking to see if we are essentially if we're here or if we're here here to here is a further distance than here to that than here to here so we need to be determining if the distance from here to here is less than the distance from here to here, right? Because from here to here should be greater as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it would be slightly greater. So, let's go ahead and determine our hex distance. So float hex distance equals, this is going to be, and actually let's go ahead and, ah uh, no, this is fine. So let's go ahead and go into our manager dot get biome hex by index, and we want to be passing in new building dot location dot world hex and new building dot location dot biome hex dot transform dot position minus near near dot transform dot position like so so we want to do something kind of like this and then we'll take the square magnitude because we're only interested in an actual comparison here and then we want to do float our distance equals and this is going to be Essentially, manager dot get build get building hex position new building dot location minus near dot transform dot position 
dot square magnitude. Okay, so if if our distance is less than the hex distance, then we know that this is valid. If our distance is less than hex distance, this is valid. If not, we're gonna need to go looking for a new world hex. Okay, like so. So, I mean, if our dist is less than hex dist, there we go. So if that's the case, then we need a switch statement here. So switch, and this is going to be a switch statement on new building dot location dot building hex. New building dot location dot building hex. And it's going to be case 10 break case 15 break case. Uh, what case is this? 21, 26, 32, and 37 break. Case 26 break. Case 32 break. And case 37 break. Okay. So, we're switching biome hexes here. So then we want to say, if we're in case 10, we want to say biome hexes i dot, and this is going to be what, neighbors do we call it? Yes. Neighbors. And then new building dot location dot building hex new building dot location dot building hex dot add and what do we want to add well we want to add essentially a new int 3 here with that new int 3 being new building dot location dot world hex our new biome hex and our new hex our new building hex so Let's see here. We are remaining in the same world hex for this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in a int3 neighbor equals, and this is going to be a new int3. We're remaining in the same world hex, so new building dot world hex, or dot location dot world hex and then we're going to need our new biome hex so hex is I believe what we called it no we called it near near dot hex index and then the building hex is why we're doing this in a switch statement that's going to need to change so case 10 is going to be connected up over on this side to 26. Like so. And then we add in neighbor. Okay, we're going to need an else statement here. Go looking for a new world hex. And we're going to probably look for the new world hex the same way we did for a new biome hex. Or at least a very similar method. But I th think it should work the same way. So then in case 15, we're basically going to just actually copy this to everything. Because the only thing that we need to change here, other than not declaring neighbor. And in fact, I'm just going to declare neighbor outside of the switch block. Int3 neighbor like so. Okay, and then the only thing that we're going to change here is this n last number here. So for case 26, obviously that's going to be connecting up to 10. And then we need to check what 15 connects up to, which is this guy here. 15 connects up to 32. So 15 to 32, and then 32 to 15. 
and then 21 and 37 would would be the connection there. So 37 and 21. Okay. So there we go. Theoretically, we now have a connection to the other building hex. And we have a way to get building hex positions, which is super nice. We can go looking for a new world hex, but I think that is an adventure for another episode. I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here, and next episode, we will go looking for a new world hex and test to make sure that this all works. See you all then.